Hello everyone, my name is Victor. I'm a uh, physiotherapist student. This is Ling. Um, so Ling, can you tell me why are you here? Um, so for the last six months, I've had some neck slash shoulder pain on and off. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say in the last week, I've had probably my worst flare up mm -hmm. in terms of pain. Um, personally, I don't think there was any sort of trauma or any incident that caused it. Mm -hmm. But from what I remember, how it started was I was sleeping mm -hmm. um, on my partner's chest. Oh. And then the next morning I woke up and I felt like I needed to crack my neck. Oh. And then from there, then, it sort of didn't go away. And it almost felt like it traveled down to my shoulder. Mm. Um, and then... Um, on the right side? Yeah, on the right side, sorry. Okay, that's okay. And um, then after that, it I think because I was feeling pain, I think I might have been guarding or something. And so my muscles were quite tight. Mm -hmm. And so it got more painful. And I went to see a physio. Mm -hmm. um, and the physio did some massage mm -hmm. and some like mobilizations in my neck. Mm -hmm. um, and she also gave me some exercises to do, like some shoulder shrugs and like with a TheraBand. Um, and I would say after I left that session, I felt a little bit better mm -hmm. after the, the soft tissue massage. Yep. Um, but it didn't sort of resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. So in sort of extreme ranges at the time, like uh, when I was doing some swimming, it sort yeah. of felt uncomfortable to be, you know, up in those extreme ranges of shoulder movement. Yeah. Um, but then I think some of the exercises did sort of help a little bit, so mm -hmm. it wasn't as bad. But then I suppose like over these six months, there've been periods where it's gotten worse. Um, or, to my knowledge, no particular reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm sort of just trying to figure out what's the best sort of thing to do. Um, last week I did go see a doctor mm -hmm. because I was just unsure why it was feeling worse. And um, he ordered an x-ray and ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And I got that done, the x-ray came back clear, and the ultrasound, yes. the conclusions were that I had subacromial bursitis and impingement. Oh. Um, and he suggested that I could take cortisone, just like a cortisone injection or something in the shoulder, because apparently that can sometimes help. Yeah, reduce the spawn. Yeah, but yeah. I think personally I prefer to do non-invasive things. Conservative management. Yeah, so. That's good. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then after that appointment with the doctor where he told me about the scans, I saw another physio mm -hmm. and he sort of just told me to continue doing exercises that don't, ag but in ranges that don't aggravate the pain. Yeah. So yeah, and, I've, and I usually play volleyball once a week mm -hmm. um, and I've sort of decided to just stop that for the moment just because it's, the last um, week it's been quite sore. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your uh, what's it called history of present pain condition. Yeah. Just have a question. Uh, at this moment, do you have pain? At rest, sitting like this, no. No. But if I were to sort of like do a shrug and like bring my shoulder up towards mm -hmm. my ear, it mm -hmm. hurts. Yeah. Um, when I get undressed or dressed, mm -hmm. I find that uncomfortable to do this position. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes things like pulling a plug out of the wall or if I'm, there was an exercise where I was prescribed like holding a dumbbell and I had to have a TheraBand like that. Okay. When I have to go against resistance like that, it hurts. Okay, so you're doing some abduction, external rotation that hurts. Yeah, uh, some, so yeah. and extreme attention. ranges of movement, so extreme abduction, extreme yeah. flexion. And then um, which one do you think that bothers you the most? From all of movement? Um, I feel like shrug. shrug yeah, from, oh. shrug is really painful. And then, would you, how would you rate it from 0 to 10? Um, I'd probably say when I do the shrug, maybe like a, a 
four at the moment. Okay. But a, a couple, like three days ago, it was yeah. more of a six or seven. Oh, like one. So I've really tried to, well. yeah. So mm. I've really tried to avoid doing a shrug. Yep. Um, and then sometimes even taking load in the arm mm -hmm. can be painful. Mm. Um, yeah. And then how are you finding it uh, when you have to reach something something above? Yeah, that? it's quite right. like yeah, it hurts a lot, and as well like being I mean, kind of, um, being very apprehensive about it as well because yeah, right. I'm aware that it hurts. Yeah, can I just Yeah. And then um, let me think. Do you drive? I do. And then driving is fine. Um, when it was really bad, driving was a bit difficult. Difficult. But at the moment, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, at the moment it's okay. And then, uh, do you feel pain, like just doing one shot, or do a couple of times you feel pain? One shot. One shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really bad. Yeah, it's quite cleared up. Yeah. But it's definitely better than the last, the, like than the previous three days. Oh, yeah. Cause, cause yeah, you're you're phase two. You know, the yeah. information stage usually lasts. Yeah. Seven days to ten days. Well, the the mm. the last time, not the most recent time I saw my physio, but the time mm. before that for the same problem, yeah. um, he I told him that I was given exercises previously, but I felt like um, mm -hmm. I didn't have pre yeah I didn't have any progression. So after oh. the pain got a little bit better, I yeah. sort of was a bit lazy and didn't do anything. So right. he gave me some better like more exercises, but this was before I had the investigations done. Oh. But I think potentially what I did in the gym, yeah. those exercises might have flared it up because I think they were maybe too complex for where my shoulder was at. Was it the time when I saw you at the gym back there? Did you have the pain? Remember? No, no. no. Okay. Um, that was like early March, April. Yeah, I think at that time it was probably not bothering me that no, much. Really. But yeah, you still had it. I still had it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah. That could, that's the only other thing that I could think of that yeah. caused the recent flare-up that mm -hmm. made it really painful. Yeah. Well, although you're really knowledgeable with a really good health literacy, but still, your tissue has a capacity to load. When you reach the load, it probably has pain. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, let me just think about, like, when, when you're driving, uh, you said it was really bad last week when you had a flare-up. Yeah. Do you feel the pain right away in your shoulder? I think it was with certain movements, like going yeah. across the body like that. Like when yeah. it's a certain... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, like having to have, like to do that with some sort of resistance, like you know, the weight of a, a, yeah. a wheel, mm -hmm. the steering wheel. Um, and how was the pain, if you recall, from, from 1 to 10? Mm -hmm. Maybe like 2 or 3. Yeah, 2 or 3. Yeah. It was still manageable, but prior to all of this, I've never had any shoulder problems. Um, but I've been from high school or even before high school, I've done a lot of overhead um, sport, like swimming, you know, volleyball, netball, basketball. Like that's a lot of overhead stuff. Um, and then and just one question is your right shoulder. Does it hurt you when you go reach your seatbelt? Um, the back? It's a little bit uncomfortable, yeah, yeah. but it's not really, yeah, a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, and then when you turn the door knob, opening the door, it's a little Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, and what else, let me think. When you put on your pants, yeah, pants, things below, below, yeah, it's okay. It's more the the 90 and above, yeah, or, or the like the, yeah, yeah. Especially with combination of shrugging, yeah. elevation of the scapula, yeah. and then, and then just, uh, beside that, your elbow is okay? Yeah, my elbow is fine. And the other side is okay? The other shoulder? Yeah. Well, I feel <laughs> like because I've been trying to use this shoulder less, yeah. this shoulder, at least the, I just have some muscle soreness from using it more. Mm. Um, but other than sore. that, I don't have it. Yeah. yeah. And then chest back is okay? I think so, yeah. Um, and then how about your neck? Your neck when you look up and down? Yeah, up and down is okay, but I do, I do feel sometimes I feel like a, a deep ache inside on the right side, on the right and side. it feels like I need to like crack it or something. Oh. Um. Yeah. But. And then how would you describe the pain from one to ten? Oh, uh, I wouldn't Wait, say what? it's particularly painful. It's, like it's discomfort. just discomfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And then on my right, on my left side, I don't feel any 
it's comforting in it. Yeah. And then, well, it's, well, if you're driving and then you look behind, yeah. check for your blind spot, does it bother you? Um, no. No? No. And then when you look down? No. No. Okay. okay. But you just feel like something there deep inside is yeah. bothering you. Okay. Did you have the neck thing before the shoulder? Well, I thought uh -huh. when the first thing that was sort of pointed out to me mm -hmm. was the neck. Was the neck, yeah. But then I don't know if that's because there was something wrong in the shoulder, so the neck was having to work more, or mm -hmm. I don't know which one was the cause. But yeah. what I noticed first was the was neck, the neck. Yeah. and then it became the shoulder. Yeah. Did you, well, obviously you study physio, we have to <laughs> read so many, so many uh, what's it called, lectures. Do you find anything that bothers you when you're studying, like your neck or shoulder? Um, not really. Not really? No. Okay. I don't, yeah. But it's more like doing activities you feel... Yeah, or yeah. just like doing activities that you normally do in daily life, like getting dressed. Okay. Yeah. And then is there any clicking? There is clicking. In your shoulder? Yeah, like if I do shoulder flexion, oh, okay. or, yeah, there I get clicking. On which, the right? Yeah, on the right mm -hmm. side, which I didn't get before. It's not painful though, I mm -hmm. think it's just un different and unusual because yeah. I didn't used to have that. Is it, is it more like a, a tendon granny clicking or is it no? Like I feel like it's like tendon um, like going over something. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Sounds good. And then, and then beside that, how's your sleep? Well, um, you woke up from your partner and then finding the pain. Yeah. I think my sleep is okay, but yeah. I've been trying not to sleep on this side because I'm aware sure. yeah. that it's sore. Mm -hmm. I think before I used to sleep a lot like on my side with my arm up. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Um, you don't wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, my shoulder's so sore. Not waking up in the middle of the night, but I think like in the morning, if I had slept like yeah. that, it mm -hmm. is a little bit sore. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any uh, numbness tingling in your no. arm? That's good. But I do sometimes feel like a pulling sensation. Pulling sensation? Yeah. Is it like neural? Like kind of neural I'm not sensation? sure. You're not sure? Yeah, because I, I, have, I don't really have much to compare to because I don't really know. I haven't had a history of shoulder mm. or, you know, but yeah, yeah I, I feel like a pulling sensation sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, but no pins and needles. No pins. Okay, yeah. that's good. Are you taking any medication? No. General, generally healthy. Um, yeah, and then you don't have uh, the 5D, 3Ns. No. Okay. 5D, 3N are dizziness uh, on the face, double vision, what's it called? Difficulty speaking, difficulty walking, uh, what else? Numbness in the mouth, uh, uh, like ear, uh, eyes flickering, what else? I missed one end. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And then all, all top attack. Oh, yeah. you know, and then also, yeah, um, sounds good. Anything else you guys want to add? Oh yeah, like more in the morning? Okay. I don't feel like there's like a pattern to how it hurts. Mm -hmm. As, yeah, I think it's a lot to do with if I've done movement. Oh, okay. Yeah. So more mechanical. Yeah. But then I think like if I if I try not to use that shoulder that much, mm -hmm. I think the muscles get really like stiff and because mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not using my shoulder that much. Yeah. Um, but it's not like more painful in the morning or more painful at okay. night or anything. And then and then like the the discomfort sensation is the same. Do you often have achy or dull pain? Sharp pain or is it combined? Mm, I think the the ache is more in the neck. Okay. And then the sharp pain, for for example, the recent flare up. If I do the shrug, it's like sharp pain. In in your shrug. Yeah, okay. just like here. Okay. It's not like in yeah. Well, well, you know what's it called? You know, you put it to yeah to observation. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to add uh, while I'm turning off the heater? That's okay. I'm, I'm also going to be cold. Okay. <laughs> Same uh, fixed posture for a long time? Um, 
I don't think like more so than the last six months, like before I had any problems. So I think just sort of like a regular amount. Victor, can you just re-ask that question? Just the last one so we pick it up on camera. Oh, which one was it? Like, what was the question? Yeah, saying, saying out of fixed posture. Yeah, oh, how often do you sit on a desk? Um, well, Sorry, how long, how long? Um, Depends. I'd probably say like maybe four to five hours in a day. Four to five hours? Yeah. And how long do you participate in overhead activities? Like going well, to the gym? Usually, or... usually um, I play volleyball once a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go to the gym to do upper body twice a week. Oh, okay. Um, and then sometimes I'll do like a Pilates class, which is very variable in what, if it's, you know, upper limb or lower limb sort yeah. of thing. Um, but the gym stuff, I would say, I only started doing for the last two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And oh. then I had my recent flare-up in those two weeks. In those two weeks. Yeah. Do you think it might be connected to your flare-up? I think maybe. Maybe. But the problem was still there before I went to the mm -hmm. gym. So well, it could, it could have been, what was it called, uh, some like um, exercises that cause your muscle tightness to be worse. worse. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. could be. Yeah. And I think I've, I've learned a lot from the subjective and I'm happy to um, start assessment and okay. objective. Mm -hmm. Anything else you guys want to ask? Asking? Oh, I mean, if you're comfortable, can we have you remove your top so we can do some observations? Okay. And then in the, if, uh, during the assessment, I'll probably do some palpation yep. if that's okay for you. Yeah, that's okay. So I've sort of just started to undress with using one the one hand mm. because it's sore. Oh yeah, this, it sounds like you have a painful arc that's bothering yeah. you going. I just don't know why the shrug is also painful. Yeah, it might it might be uh, your scalp will rising up. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. So we'll start with some observations. I recently had a hip pain. And be, oh, you did? Yeah. I recently had a hip pain, so I've been pulling on my pants with one hand too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll st first we'll just have you sit normally. Mm -hmm. so Shall I face you? Or? Yeah, face this way and then I'll just move around. Yeah. How are you feeling just sitting there? Yeah. Is that how you're normally sit? Um, I probably sit more slashed, to be honest. Okay, that's okay. Because okay. from, from my observation, if you guys want to take a look, if you guys want to come around, um, from my observation, I, I think Ming has a forward, uh, sorry, forward head posture, and we're both scapular are, are rounded. I broke part. Yeah, perfection. And then, and then looking at the, uh, sorry, just looking at the scapulars here, very good lower traps. And then if we do three points, sorry, my hand is That's okay. Yeah. So it looks like, it looks like the scapular is a little bit protracted. And then if we compare, compare to this side, um, the right side has been more protraction and it's slightly slightly, uh, what's it called, upper rotation compared to the left. And then on the symmetrical muscle bulk. Does that make sense? I think so. Because I, I felt like, well, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm being in particular or if it's just more my posture that way. Can you put that in there? I feel like Oh yeah, now you mentioned it. Oh, thanks, thanks me. Oh, her, her left shoulder has uh, more muscle bulk. Yeah, but my right hand is my dominant hand. Yeah. But usually people uh, people have lower shoulder on the dominant hand though. Really? Yeah, usually. Yeah. And then if I look at her neck, um, arching this way. Okay, let me think. Well, any 
Anything else you guys want to add in observation before we move on to um, assessments? Oh yeah, around the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, active range of motion, A1. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with your good shoulder. Mm -hmm. Have you just sit or do you want me to sit? Oh, actually stand up before we do um, this process. My hands on your side. Just relax, stand normally. Do you see any difference? A little bit of low doses. Doses. And then, and then increased um, what's called curvature of the thoracics. And if a low doses was present, hip, or she has probably a little bit of anterior pelvic tilt. Yeah. Can I put my hands on your PFS? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Actually, not too bad. I think it's more than 15 degrees. I think you have a little bit. Yeah, anterior yeah. tilt. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's it called? Knees open. Knees open. Sorry. Knees looking okay. On the socks too. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel anything in your knee, in your, in your legs, in your hip, in your back? No, nothing like that. Okay, sounds good. All right. Okay, we'll just uh, do the assessment standing up. Okay. So left hand first. We're gonna go flexion all the way up. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you? No. No. Okay. You can bring it down. Oh, I should have uh, stolen a goniometer from from placement too, so we can measure it. <laughs> but I bowling, and that's one eighty degrees. Very good. Very good range of motion. Okay. Let's do it with this hand slowly to the point of pain. To the point of pain. But is the pain bearable? Yeah, it's bearable. Yeah. So pain at 140 degree for eyeball? Yeah. Oh, I will probably write this down. Uh, A1. Oh, sorry, I forgot to write down posture. <laughs> just does a really good job of helping with a subjective assessment. It's like four weeks ago, yeah. I don't even know what to ask for doing something. Like now I'm more confident. Basket. Yeah, thanks. Um, one shoulder, upper, upper rotation. And then we have the elevated left shoulder. Flexion. Uh, so this one's at 180. This one, go up again. 90. That's a point of pain. Yeah. Okay, 135. And then if you can, you can bear the pain and then go to 170. And that looks a little bit. Oh, wow. It's okay, you can bring it down. Okay, the next thing we're gonna see is abduction, so thumb all the way here. No problem. Okay, put it down. And this one? To the point of pain? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, it's higher than flexion. Yeah. Go again. Once. There. Once. Well, once seven. Once seven. And then you're able to bring all the way up. Yeah. Can so once I do that, yeah. it's like, yeah, I feel like a closing in my shoulder. Closing? Yeah. And from scale of 10, how much does it bother you? A lot. Well, yeah. And like, you don't look so happy. Yeah. 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 Like, I just don't want to make it worse. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so together. Yeah. yeah. This one. And then I get a click here. 
Okay, cool. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is, hold on, I'm gonna tell my girlfriend to stop, stop messaging me. <laughs> Very unprofessional, I'm sorry. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is that you're okay to put your hands behind your head? Yeah. Oh, that was my elbow. Oh, okay. And then, did you feel anything there, going there? Mm. No, I think that's okay. That's okay? Is it okay because from the quality of your movement, I feel like you're really careful? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, uh, reduce quality. And then, uh, before doing that, um, hands this way. And then this one first, let's go in outside. Okay, no problem. That's really good, 90 degrees. And this one slowly. Pain, no pain. From the reading of your face, a little bit discomfort. Um, or you yeah, just. I think it's okay. I'm just like hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're just. I think it's okay. Scared. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to put hand behind back. So you start with the left one first. See how high you can bring your arm to. This is for this you can go. Oh, that's really good. Two, three. Okay, we're going to do this one to the first point of pain. Okay, let me think. After a room, um, and then, and then so when you when you were doing uh, shoulder abduction, did you notice you were tilting your head to the side? Yeah, uh -huh. Yeah. So you're like you're like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably I probably do do that. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is because your shoulder couldn't get enough energy you have to compensate. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then before we do any uh, strength testing, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is I'll take a look of your, um, what's it called? Um, your neck range of motion. Okay. So you can look up all the way. Is it painful? No. No? Okay. Are you coming down? Coming down is probably 45 degrees, going up is 90 degrees. Yeah? No, sorry, more than 40 to 60 degrees. And then you just look all the way to that side. Good. I'm looking all the way to that side. Good. Yeah. yeah, it feels like about the same, but this way, 5% deficit. Yeah. Less than five percent. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, and then, and then. Well, can you tell me how you feel in your neck again? Well, I get like on the right side. Sometimes I get deep ache. Deep ache. Yeah. And then, is there any specific movement that provokes it? It's very inconsistent. Okay. So I think in my recent flare, flare up, sometimes like. Lateral flexion to the other side. Oh, yeah. Which can be a bit painful. Sounds good. But speaking of lateral. Sometimes doing the rotation to the other side yeah. brings on the, the feeling. Mm. Yeah, that I don't know. That I need to, like, there's like a restriction yeah. or a stopping or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, from, can you just do a lateral flexion to your left side first? The little furthest you can go? And then other side. A lot more. Not a lot more, but 10 degrees more. Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'll do some isometric strength okay. testing of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. If anything, did I miss anything from Iran? I did everything for Iran. Yeah. Oh, yeah, extension. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we're gonna do this. No, uh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Eighty degrees. Actually, number two is not in my colleague. 
Fraction abduction is limited by pain. I suppose, like, if I really, yeah, it's limited by pain, but if I push all the way, then yeah. it's just, it's fine, the curves. If you were pointing with one finger, yeah. where is the pain? Like here. Yeah. Well, actually, it's here, oh. but then in the neck, it's here. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Here. Victor, if we could either have um, Ming turning this way or that way, just a point. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because so I then see. people on camera can see. Oh, yeah. Watching. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that's where the brachial plexus uh, travels. Maybe it has something to do with the nerve. We can do the it's called dynamic nerve testing. All right. So we'll start with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you to um, lie down here. Oh yeah, and lie down flat on your back. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, the test I'm going to do is called um, dynamic nerve testing. It's like a modified uh, median nerve well, testing to see if there's any what's called induced. Um, Neurotension in your upper limb. My hands are extremely cold. I'm really sorry. Okay. Okay. Victor, I might get you um, have me put your head over this side, me. Because um, you look better on camera. <laughs> well, it'll be easier for us to see on camera, and everyone watching at home can see um, what so you're doing. Yeah, that's fine. Under the here. <laughs> Good customer service. <laughs> Okay, so relax here. Relax. Do you feel pain here? No. Not on this much. Yeah, I've got a little bit of touch. Yeah, I've got a little bit of touch. Didn't like the movement. <laughs> I think it's for here. Oh no. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to put your hands on the tension in your tendon. to the side. I'm not too sure if my techniques are right, but I think she does have neural. Okay, good. Neural. You can mark that down for now. Yeah. No, it just it just it just means there's some tightness in your nerves that it doesn't reach all the way to the end of your uh, for upper extremities. Yeah. And uh, what we're gonna do now is have you sit back up. Um, <coughs> What we're going to do now is we're going to test your shoulder strength. Um, yeah, I 
think I can when I try to cross my shoulder. You cross your shoulder? Yeah. With some scapular movement? Yeah. Okay, can, can we do uh, a wrong again? Just have you uh, shrug your shoulder and then... On both sides? Uh, this side first. Good. Then on this one. Do you have pain? Not that much. And then will you shrug your whole shoulder and then stop at the pain level of pain? Mm. It's alright now actually. Alright. Yeah. And then will you depress your shoulder down? Yeah. Yeah. If you have pain. Yeah. In the front. Yeah. In the front. Yeah. Underneath your clavicle. Yeah. Okay. So good. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to carry on with uh, what's it called? Strength testing. Mm -hmm. we're, we're actually going to start with actual flexion. So I'll, I'll help you. This one first, um, I'm going to do this here, and I will just hold this position, and push it down. It will help you feel. Okay, this one I'll start with really gentle. How do you feel? Pain. Discomfort. Okay. It's fine. Okay. And then abduction here, 90 degrees. Good. So just hold this position. This one only. Good. This one. 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 This one? That doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. But external rotation does pain. Mm. External oh, rotation does pain. Resistance. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it's like grade okay, three parts. Grade four. It's like, it's not, it's not close to grade five. It's like, yeah, one of the three, but, mm. yeah. Okay. Uh, extension. So, have your hands here and then hold this position. Good. And this one? Good. Okay, now we're going to go uh, strength assessment through the whole range. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one. Gonna go all the way up, 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 up. Good. Okay, and then let's go extension. Okay. All the way down, 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 down. down. Good. How do you feel? Okay, and then this one. Yeah. Up, 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 no pain? No. Yeah, same rotation? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. And then internal rotation? Good. And this one, okay, we'll start really gentle. Okay, ready? Match my first. Go, 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 go. Like that. Thank you. Or well, just like difficulty going, yeah. Difficulty. Just comfort going beyond that range. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna put my hands here. Yeah. How do you feel? That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna do abduction. Mm -hmm. Wait, so when you are doing flexion, is it the same pain when you were doing uh active range of motion? Yeah, it's yeah. the same like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like it it's just a positional thing, it's not really a strength yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm actually just do it for this. Um, I'll just do it. We have the every information we need yeah. to get from me. Okay. Uh, abduction. Abduction. Ready? So, 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 so. so. Yeah. I, I do see a little twitching. Yeah. Going on. yeah. And it's it's painful. Yeah. Stop here. Next extension. Good. Uh, oh, you say external was painful. Yeah. Okay. Let's go again. Maybe it's when my, my elbow is not towards my body. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, anything else you guys want to 
assess before we move on to other stuff. I don't know if it's relevant, but you said like you had the ultrasound scan. Yeah. It says that it what suffered from your impingement. Yeah. Like if it's Bursitis and impingement. Yeah, and then if like testing the distance between the kind of curious and the real is Yeah, good good call. You might have a like increased yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but impingement it looks pretty similar. And then and then I'm thinking we can move on to some special tests. So for example, the full can, empty can, the biceptal tendon test. Okay, stand up. So the first one we're, we're gonna do is the empty ten, can test. So hopefully we we'll find valuable information from this one. Mm -hmm. So this one you're going to bring your uh, shoulder up to horizontal and then thumb pointing down 15 degrees ahead of you. Hold this position. Do you feel any discomfort at the moment? Mm, no, I'm okay. Okay, I'm just gonna slowly push you down. What do you feel? I think as you put more resistance, I'm starting to feel something here. Okay. Higher. Not yeah. that top point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like a pulling. Pulling? Yeah. Mm. And then let me think uh we'll do a full can. Oh, is it? Oh, hands all the way up. Here, yeah, hands go to push you down. Does it hurt? No. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the weak? <laughs> okay, this one. Ready? Yeah. About the same. Yeah. Um, the second one is good. And then, and then the other one, or the other one, or the other one, this way. What do you think? This way. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? No. I mean, when you go to the extreme there, like I feel a little bit weird back there. Back there? But mm. Is it increasing when we go down? Yeah. I'll do it this side real quick. You know, I've already been really sick when we were learning this last year. Same feeling. Same feeling. Yeah. Because okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I think I've done. Um, no, yeah. Go ahead. Neck strength test. Huh? Neck strength test. I I think neck strength, but I also don't want to, like you know, do two things at once. Because I really thought about like having an issue with the neck ball, so just want to clear the shoulder first. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. All right, let's get started. Yeah. So, am I in Victor? Yes. That's good. Okay. Let's get started. Victor, yes. let's start with the subjective. Subjective. Oh, subjective. S subjective. What do What's I the first question? that you found out? Well, what's the first question you asked? I asked her, uh, well, why are you here, essentially? Main actually. problem? Yeah, main problem. The history of presenting condition. Yeah. Uh, so main, main problem? Yeah. What did you work out? Main's, ha Main's been having this issue in her neck and shoulder for the past six months. Yes. And it's been ongoing, and had a flare up last week. Okay. And, uh, and if I were to say what is the main problem, what would it be? Uh, neck and shoulder pain. Neck and shoulder pain. Yeah. What is that stopping her from doing? Usually people who have a pain, yeah. it's only a problem because if they can't do something due to the pain. So as physios, we need to work that out. She, so what can't she do? She said she stopped playing volleyball and reduced gym. Just reduced gym. Yeah. And then it's just overall really uncomfortable. Reduced volleyball. What else? What is um, gym? Gym? Yeah. Gym. Yep. And Anything then else? Find putting on clothes really challenging. Clothes? Putting on or off clothes? Oh, off. Both. 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 Yeah. Uh, clothes. On. Oop. Clothes 
lights on and off. Anything else? Um, do you shrug? Shrug, shoulder shrugs? Yeah, shoulder shrugs. Shoulder. Oh, and then yeah, she had a flare up. Driving was uncomfortable for her. Uncomfortable for yeah. her as well. Driving. Yeah. And then she had this deep neck ache when she, like, when when you were having the flare up, right? Yeah. yeah. There was an ache during a flare up. Mm. What was it stopping her from doing? And uh, why is that question important? Because we want to find out her like limitations. Limitations. Yeah. Why is it important to find out her limitations? We want to fix her main problem. Okay. Yeah, because that's your problem. Okay. What other information can we get from decreased volleyball, decreased gym, clothes on and off, shoulder shrugs and driving? It's more like two shoulders. Hmm? A lot of shoulder activities. It's a shoulder activities, but how much volleyball is it? One, wait, you said you said one once a week? Yeah, but I actually used to play three times a week and oh, I never no. had any Is that important? Problems. It is important. So Ming's gone from three times a week uh -huh. to once a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? Now, why is that important? She has stopped doing what she loved to do. Yeah. Um, no, that that was just based off lifestyle. So, yeah, but I'm just doing less activity than before. But when I was doing three times a week, I didn't have shoulder or neck pain. Okay. So even right now, after doing it once, you yeah. have a problem? Yeah. Or, I mean, I only do it once now. I don't know if it's if it has been contributing to the problem or not. I've only just stopped the last two weeks. But for prior to that, in the six months where I've had the issue, I've still played because I felt like, I don't know, with adrenaline and that, it doesn't bother me too much. Okay. And I don't feel like the next day it feels particularly more painful because of the volleyball. It doesn't. Sure. Okay. So I continue to play. So until the question I usually have is, if there was a gun to your head, if you had to do it three times, would that be a problem? Um, with the shoulder flare up. Maybe. Maybe. Because I, I, I found that the last time when I played, it was difficult to get in those ranges where I have to be overhead. And I felt like um, it was my arm was almost like lagging a little bit. Like when you do a certain, you have to go really fast. And I felt like I wasn't getting that speed. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. And the other question I have then is, before you had the shoulder problem, you, if, you were to doing, if you were to do volleyball three times a week, yeah. And if you give it a perfect score, 10 out of 10, mm -hmm. okay? What would you give it now? And zero, you can't do. Do you mean performance or pain? Performance. Performance. If I were to do it now, yeah. to play now, probably like a six. Six out of 10? Yeah. Do you think it's more of a psychological thing? I think it can be a combination of both. If you were to do it once a week, yeah. is it a six out of 10 or less? Oh, okay. Um, Six out of ten, meaning ten out of ten, you can do oh, it, no see, problem. Uh, see, actually, I think three times a week right now, probably more of a four out of ten. Four out of ten. Four out of ten, and time the once a week. Mm, I could probably push myself to do it, so I could maybe like an eight out of ten. Okay. But yeah. Ten. Why is that important for us? Because we want to know if. The more activity will trigger her shoulder. And also, what we worked out is initially we were thinking, oh, volleyball three times a week, could it be lifestyle that caused it? But we've also worked out that it's actually possible the shoulder's not performing. Once a week, okay, eight out of 10. But if you were to play three times a week, yeah, it, it diminishes to four. Why is that important? Why, is, why are those two numbers important? Uh, because linked with more activity of the shoulder. Yeah. Ultimately, we want that four and eight to go up, don't we? Yeah. yeah. What about gym? Can we do the same with gym? How many gym sessions? Well, I've only just started gymming in the last two weeks, and I do two sessions of upper body a week. Okay. And could so and two? I could do them, but yep. I was getting clicking, and in those um, overhead extreme ranges, I felt like a bit of a restriction and some discomfort. Sure. 10 out of 10 being perfect, and zero not great, or can't do it all, what would you give that? Um, Go to the gym twice a week. Probably like a seven. Seven. So that's not as bad, is it? Yeah. Clothes on, mm -hmm. 
versus clothes off. Which one is causing the problem? What do you think, Victor? I think maybe clothes off. Maybe, right? Yeah. Is it worthwhile finding out? Yeah, it's yeah. a clothes off all the time. When I do this, it hurts. So, so sure. clothes on. Yeah. And then when I put clothes on, like it's that part where I have to then put put it put my head through and do this. Uh, this is painful. Which so one? Or both. Or both. Yeah, I would say it's equally the same in the aggravating position. Okay. So clothes on, what would you give it? If 10 out of 10 being perfect, zeros you can't do? Well, I feel like it's a bit of a four or three. Four. What would you like? Maybe three. three? Yeah. Three out of ten. Off is the same or? Yeah, same. Three. All right. Shrugs? I'd say it's like as an out of ten. Yeah, 10 out of 10 being a perfect shrug. Yeah, I would Zero say, you can't do. Yeah, I'd probably say four. Four. Four out of 10. Driving. Mm. What other information do we need with driving? Driving, what other information? Yeah. Uh, if if uh, Ming says, look, yeah, driving hurts. Mm. What aspect of driving should we get more information on? Or what movement of driving we could have? That's one. She, uh, and What's how long? Thing? How long? How long? Good. And now we're picking that up. Yes. Have we asked her? Oh yeah. Oh, she said it uh, hurts her two out of ten when she's driving. Yeah, having to go across midline. Yeah, across yeah. midline. But Good. two out of ten was the pain, so probably yeah. eight out of ten for, for performance. That is what we would we then. Think. We would think, yeah. but it's always good. If oh. you were to drive and your arm's going across the midline, yeah. 10 out of 10 being a perfect score, zero you can't do, yeah. what would you give it? I'd probably give it a seven. Seven. See yeah. how it changed slightly? Mm. Seven, so this is cross midline? Yeah. That's the only time? Reaching for CBL, reaching for something yeah, behind. CBL's okay. Okay, yeah, I think good. So what have we done there? Uh, well, plan for objective assessment with the information we have here. Yeah, and yeah. also, us scoring like this, what's that called? Oh, Do you guys know what that is? I, I forgot the name, but you use... Oh, prioritized. Patient-specific, functional, scale. Yeah. So patient-specific, functional, scale, what's a maximum score? that she could get. What's the maximum score Ming can get? There's one score, there's another one. Here's a score here. Let me just circle them. Two, this is a score. Here's a score in here, here, and here. So what's the maximum Ming can get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maximum would be? 70. 70. How much did she score? Four plus eight? 12 plus 7? 19 plus 3? 22 plus 3? Was that 25? Right? Yeah. 25 plus 4? What was it? 29, right? Yeah. And 36, yes. I thought someone said 26. 36. So the patient-specific functional score is oh. her equivalent score is now thirty-six out of seventy. Why is that important for you? It's, it's an outcome measure to track progression. And exactly. What you've gone and done is you've made your subjective yeah. objective. Mm. Working this out like this, how important is this to me? Oh, very important. Are you sure? Uh, do you think? It's yes, <laughs> that's the best way to find out, isn't it? It's the best way to find out from me. What do you think, Ming? Yeah, I guess it's. Sort of a good, um, like a numerical thing to to match all these symptoms. That's and right. To track and see over time if it changes. Exactly. Also, you know, you can talk about pain, but us as practitioners, can we feel your pain? No. We can't ever feel someone else's pain, but what we can do is make everything very objective, mm -hmm. and these are the things that we can change. Ming, if you score high on this, what could happen to your pain? Uh, or if this starts getting better, closer to the 70? Yeah, probably maybe go down. It could go yeah. down. Yeah. Okay. It means that you can do, do a lot more. more yeah. 
So it's very important to talk to the person and understand about their pain because they have come here because of pain. But this part here is one of the most important things in the subjective that you've evaluated uh, what's going on, created an objective way of looking at uh, means pain. Mm. Okay, done that. What, what else did you learn in the subjective? Oh, subjective. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think overall she's quite uh, apprehensive about her shoulder. Okay, apprehensive? Like she, she reported uh, like something you feel you don't want to go yeah. into the position, you're trying to avoid some activities, trying yep. to use left hand more and yep. left, yeah. So reluctant to use that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, under the subjective, what does that fall under? Um, is it, uh, yeah, what type of questioning creates that? So is it the 24 hour pain pattern? Is it more irritability? Is it, what do, what do you think I it think is? I think it's more of like ease after, because letting the hand rest. Okay. I yeah. think it's more good. Not too short. So then ags and eases. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these things can have a crossover as well. You mm. can utilize it in a few things. So, easing factors, using the other side. Mm, I guess. Okay. Avoidance. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, avoidance, which is not really an easy factor, it's just avoiding it. Yeah. All right. What are some of the ag factors? Uh, ag would factor would be for sleeping on this side. Yeah. yeah. Sleep. On the side. And then those certain positions that cause the pain. So certain positions, what are they? Uh, well, like, well, sorry, from objective assessment we did, it was uh, flexion and abduction, um, extreme rotation. Yeah, against some resistance. Against the resistance. Also from the driving, it's uh, this position as well. Okay, so we can say driving yeah. crossing the midline that's one what else is it was there anything up here that it was extreme flexion extreme abduction and then external rotation with resistance extension external rotation good with resistance yeah it's like um, yeah yeah there all right, we have the main problem. We have ags and eases. What else do we need in our subjective? Oh, uh, ease. Yes. She also has uh, felt a little bit better after soft tissue massage. Yeah. Soft tissue massage. And I've tried to use heat as well. Heat. Mm. Does it help? Which makes it, I feel like it helps sort of the muscles relax a little mm. bit, which could also be contributing to pain. Cool. Mm. Are you guys happy with ags and eases? Yeah. Yeah. What else is next? Uh, we bought 24 hours pattern. Yes. It doesn't we really have a pattern? No just, pattern? Yeah, just use more, it hurts, and then when she avoids a movement, it becomes stiff. Okay, yeah. so repeat that again. So when Ming uses her shoulder more, she felt like more pain, discomfort. Okay. And if she, if she uh, avoids using the arm, she feels the side's getting stiff. Okay, what does that suggest? Both. Is yeah, control. so it's a bit of both, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's put a tick against that. So 24 hour pain pattern, you've just worked out what might happen through movement and also during the course of the day. Yeah. So we have main problem, ags, ease, 24 hours, what's next? Investigation. Investigations, yeah. what are they like? Uh, doctor had an x-ray, it was clear. Investigations. And that was all clear? Right. Yeah, X-ray was fine. Yeah. X-ray was fine. Ultrasound. Ultrasound has subacromian bursitis and impingement. Okay, so subacromian bursitis. Yeah, and ultrasound. Yeah, also impingement. Oh, well, it's kind of very similar. Impingement shoulder. Did that come up on the ultrasound? Yeah, that's what the so the the quote was subacromial bursitis and impingement and impingement yeah somehow they got that from the somehow they got it okay in impingement in an ultrasound yeah okay so that's ultrasound all right what's next so and that was investigations and sorry past history 
no, no, uh, no English code or anything for past history. Good. Yep. Yeah, and then not taking any medica medication. Meds. Generally healthy. Yeah. Not uh, general health. General health, good. Good. Past history, meds, general health. Yeah. Anything else? And then social history. She's a swimmer, plays basketball, has access to the gym. Social history. And studying physiotherapy. Active. Yeah. Swimming. Yeah. What was that? Swimming? Volleyball. Volleyball. And? Gym. Gym and physio student. Yeah, yeah student. Active. Yeah. <laughs> Active. Yeah. And all that sense. And then, because I thought I thought about the neck, so I asked her about the uh, what's called the BBI. What's okay. called BBI? Yeah. And BBI is all clear. So that was an objective test, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Mm. What's next? Oh, was that that was it? I think so. Are you guys happy with the subjective? Is there anything else to add? Have we missed anything? Oh, goals, goals, yeah. Ah, goals. Yeah. Um, she, well, she, she would like to return to um, all the activities here. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, well, have pain-free shoulder, shoulder uh, function. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now. Is that a short-term goal, medium-term goal, or long-term goal? I mean, I'd like it to be a short-term goal. Yes. But, um, yeah. I think I, maybe long-term would be to continue progressing my upper, um, upper limb things in the gym. To take it to a higher function. Yeah, higher function. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So in terms of this social history, really ramp that up for all the sport that you yeah. are playing without yeah. having this to be yeah. a problem. Yeah. Um, I really like to work out athletes, uh, general public, you know, what they want to achieve out of this short term, medium term, and also long term, like 12 months time, what, you know, where would you like to see yourself? Yeah. Why does that work? Why do you think I would ask about a 12 month goal? Maybe to look at like the person's expectations as well mm. and also your health as a private uh, as a primary carer uh, i'm here to take care of you for yeah. in the long term you know yeah. this is one little hurdle that we have and if we can overcome this wow you know yeah. there's so much more that we can potentially help you with excellent so out of all of this or out of all this information what was the most crucial for you victor i think it was the main problem Good. And now we've got some solid scores here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll diagnose. I'll diagnose. I'll diagnose. All right. All right. Objective. Objective. Observation. I'll we'll start with uh, observation. Oh. Yeah. So we, we. What did you find? We find that me has had four posture by roughly three to four centimeters okay. per year. So. Uh, Observation, there's something not right. Yeah. Okay, what else? Uh, well, around the shoulder. Around the shoulders, yep, so two things not right. Two things. And then, like, significant elevate, sorry, upper rotation on the right scapular and then left uh, elevated the shoulder. Okay, so observation wise, you're happy with that, you've done it. Yeah. Okay, good. What's after observation? Oh, we did, we did, uh, did we do the neural thing before? A1? Yeah. We did? Oh yeah, we did, uh, we did the neurotension, definitely neurotension. Neurodynamics testing. And you found uh, positive. positive? On both one side? Or positive both sides. Yeah. So I'll just put a cross there. Neural dynamics testing, so that's another cross. Yeah. Yeah. And then we found that there's deficit in active range of motion. Active range of motion. Uh, yeah, so inflection, abduction, and external rotation. They're reduced range due to pain and discomfort. Yeah. By what range? Oh, flexion is 130. That's the first point of pain. Yeah. But she could still go up to 170 degrees. And uh, where the other side is 180, normal. 
and then abduction 170 and then a little bit well lateral which one of these had the main deficit main deficit and fraction fraction yep yeah so the other ones had deficits but they weren't as bad no they weren't as bad and then if, if i was ranking them there will be fraction abduction yep. and uh, external rotation Abduction. Oh, sorry, sorry. Flexion, abduction, and extension. Oh, okay. Flexion was the worst one. Okay. All right, good. And then what else did you do? We did what well, we did hand behind head. Yep. Hand behind head, hand yeah. behind back. Oh, we did both. Both? Yeah. So, hand behind head, there's reduced right arm quality of movement. She was kind of apprehensive and then uh, a little bit. Good. Not... What was the other test? Hand behind back? Yeah. So, hand behind back, left was up to T3 and right was up to T6. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, T3, hand behind head, what percentage deficit? What percentage? Well, probably 5% to 10% deficit. 5 or 10? 10. Good. Oh, hand behind back is T6. The deficit was T6. And we want to... Uh, so that was the one. Yeah, this one, T3 right. is a good one, T6. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we did, we did uh, what's called strength uh, testing. So strength testing was really similar to, uh, what's it called? Isometric, there was no um, deficit except for external, external rotation. She felt pain at the front of her uh, shoulder here. Yep. So tell me about the deficit. Uh, which, which movement? Just external rotation of the right arm. External rotation. How much oh, of a deficit? Yeah, uh, grade four. Grade four? Grade three point five to four. I don't know. It's very. Yeah. You right. can't do points on yeah. that, can we? It's like four minus. Four right? minus. Four minus. Yeah. Four minus. The other side was a five. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Strength, oh, so what movement was that? Uh, external rotation of the right. The right shoulder. So Your right hand behind back was better? No, so, t so left is T3, right is T6. Mm. All right, so strength wise, grade four minus external rotation, right shoulder. Mm. What else? Um, and then and then we did we did uh, active range of motion for neck. You did neck. Yep. What did you find? We found uh, right rotation was five percent deficit. And, uh, neck. Yep. And then the. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Did you repeat that. Neck. What did you find? Oh, uh, neck. Right uh, rotation. So right cervical spine. Yeah. Cervical spine, right rotation. Uh, and then also another deficit is lateral flexion. Cervical lateral flexion and then to the re right. To, no, lateral flexion to the left was reduced. It was not as good as the right. Okay. Left. Yep. Yeah. How much of a deficit here? Deficit here, it was 5%. 5%. Really minor. Here it's uh, it's ten degrees. Ten degrees. The other side would be uh, would be fifty five. Ten Big degrees five. versus fifty five. Oh, sorry. Um, this one is forty five degrees versus fifty five. Forty five. Yeah. <coughs> so this one was a percentage you worked out. This one's degrees. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah. All right. Good. Anything else? Uh, that's it. All right. Oh, sorry. We did some special test. Special we, test. Yeah, we did. We did empty can, full can. Uh, what's this one called again? I forgot. Is it speed? Like, oh yeah, speed. Full can. Uh, empty can. Empty can. Speed. Speeds. And then we did uh, this one's the apprehension. Walking to Kennedy. Walking to Kennedy. 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 Yeah. Which one was positive? Mm. Were they all negative? Or well, well, there was a little bit clicking when we 
did the uh, uh, what's it called speed wing speed or or Hawkins Kennedy. Um, I think. But it wasn't really painful or discomfort. Yeah. And this is. Empty can a little bit of that. Mm. So, with all the testing that we're doing, we're being objective, right? Yeah. Can we ever feel Ming's pain? No. Okay. No. Because every test you did, what I did notice was, you did the full can, you said, oh, is that painful? Uh -huh. All right, you did the impingement, oh, is that painful? Yeah. Now, if it's a truthful athlete, yeah. truthful person, yeah, you can oh, use that information. Well, yeah, was... But there are people who might have to lie mm. because they're trying to get a sports contract, they're trying to get a job. Mm. So utilizing just pain is not always the answer. Right. So. What I like to do is break up the special tests into potentially range and quality of motion. You talked about clicking. Mm. You can always do a test and you can see if uh, the quality of motion and the range that you do it is going to be helpful or if it's going to be equal. Mm -hmm. So in that way, that's something to practice on in the future as well, for sure. Okay, yeah. because that will make it. You can say, "Oh yeah, full cam was positive." Mm. It's either we couldn't get through full range, or the testing, uh, you know, was certainly weak because you're certainly testing things like weakness or empty cam. There's weakness. Yeah. There might be some kind of complaint like pain. But what, you're, what you can actually feel is some deficit in strength, range, quality. So you could add these things on. And that's how you make your special tests as Jeffy. Okay. Yeah, special tests, special. So definitely you probably want to look back, or which ones stand out now? Not to pain, but where they stood out to you, where you thought, hang on a second, there's, there's a somewhat deficit in one side to the other. I think, I think they, they were quite... Yeah, I think they were all... The, they were all, yeah. Right, they were all similar. Okay, yeah. so all similar mean as in all positive? As no, in no, no. Neck, neck, not, yeah. Not, posi not uh, positive. Not positive, so yeah. you're happy with it? Yeah, and okay. my life is similar. Alright, so they're all, they're all happy with these. Okay. Well, I'm quite surprised with empty can because I was... Because you have the impingement with the yeah. bursitis. Yeah. Like, um, like roots. So this is how you can quantify yeah. a special test. Mm. Why is this important? Well, because well, special tests usually lose in or lose out some specific uh, problem. Mm. Yeah. So with this information, that you, you probably don't have any um or like bicep to tendon problem or spasticus problem. How can can you just like overall uh, what's it called uh, rotator cuff uh, in in integrity? Mm -hmm. Four canes overall arm strength. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever the interpretation is for the special test, you can then work out and say, oh, that's not it. So you can sort of cross out some major things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so out of all of these, was there anything else? We, I didn't do neck because I thought I want to focus one thing at a time. Yes, should yeah. you have? I should. Yeah, why? Because cervical spine. Because that's like a very combined problem. Mm. Yeah. Also, I'm not really good with assessing your neck. Okay, whether a person's good or bad, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Especially if you haven't had much experience in a cervical spine, yeah. lumbar spine, that's okay. The key thing there is to give it a shot mm. because until you practice it, you don't know. For sure. But at least you're doing it. Mm. So, in the right shoulder, well, first of all, should we have assessed cervical spine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other areas we should have identified or looked at? Oh, also, I was looking at the overall posture. She, she, well, she had like rounding shoulder or dorsus and then anterior pelvic tilt. I think it might be contributing. So that was more observation? Yeah, observation. Observation, whole body observation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, 
there's other areas to look at as well. Thoracic spine, should we assess thoracic spine? Yes. And why? Because that's connected to the cervical spine. And then, and then and also the shoulder. A, yeah, she's a, what's it called, overhead athlete. She'll probably move, uh, what's it called, she'll probably perform a lot of uh, thoracal rotation, flexion, mm. extension. Good. Um, in my experience, any kind of shoulder problems as well, I look further down as well, lumbar spine, I look at you know, how the glutes function. If you picked up some kind of anterior, posterior pelvic tilt, there might be something happening down here that is either slowing down the healing or could be one of the main contributing factors to the problem. So I certainly don't dismiss anything here. Right now you've done, say this, but we need to address other areas as well. So you can certainly go into lumbar spine, blue teals. Um, you know, I've had athletes where I had to have look at feet, yeah. where the position of the feet can affect what happens further up. I had a hip pain and then because I did it from my neck and then from the spine. <laughs> yeah. So the whole body is connected that way. So out of the objective information that you have, which one would you say is the worst? Which one is the worst sign for you? I think I think the external rotation was the the most uh, the, that stood out the most to me. Where is that? Here? I, external rotation with resistance. So that's strength, right? Yeah. So this one stood out to you? Yeah, because that's really strange. Because yeah, but that was only a grade four minus. Yeah. Oh, and then. That caused the pain, that, yeah. again, that caused the pain, right? Yeah. So grade four minus aggravated pain and also, uh, okay, so that's a grade four minus that causes that, right? Yeah. Anything here, anything else here that stands out objectively to you? Um, it would be flexion, like uh, uh, active range of motion with flexion. You haven't got that down? Oh, active range of flexion. Yeah. Oh, this one. Because so that good. one, that one's like 130 degree with the pain. Yep. And then, and then she could only move to 170. So active range of motion flexion is a main or one of the main problem signs. Yeah. Strength, external rotation, is a problem. Um, what else is there that stood out to you? Um, lateral flexion of the neck was 10 degree deficit. Oh, sorry, before lateral flexion of the neck, I think hand to hand back was quite... Uh, this one? Yeah. This, so that's a deficit here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. As a combination of internal rotation. That's the cervical spine stuff. Oh, I don't write that down. I think you had it here. The rotation. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. So that's the other one then. Cervical rotation? Yeah, it's 5%. You're happy? You want me to mark that? I, I, think, I think it has something to do with the neck, but. <sighs> that's good. So you're trying to work out. You've got anything else? Anything else to mark? Um, lateral flexion as well of the neck. Mark this one as well. Yep. Yeah. So we have shoulder flexion. Yeah. We have uh, cervical right rotation, lateral flexion, hand behind back, which is a pretty solid test to reproduce. Strength. That's also another test. Mm -hmm. So parts of these. Just mark these. These are more tests, aren't they? Things that you can't do that really stand out. These are also tests. Tests. And flexion, that's also another test. But what I'm trying to get at is each of these movements require what to the joint? Compression. Like compression to the joint. Or oh, movement, movement to the joint. Yeah, so what kind of movement, say if it was shoulder flexion, yeah. okay? Shoulder flexion, um, what kind of movement is happening within the joint? Is it the translation, the roll and glide? Yeah, Growing. it's a roll and glide. So, what do we classify that as? I'll use the brake pen. <laughs> oh yeah, actually. Accessory. Movements and physiological. Mm. Is it important to assess those? Yes. 
Yeah. Shoulder flexion, yeah. we want to assess that. Now, these are joints, shoulder flexion, um, that's glenohumeral joint, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. What are the other joints that we might... Should we do pavums and pivums? Yes. And what do they stand for? Passive accessory intervertebral movements. Passive physiological. That sort of covers cervical spine. Yeah. Okay. These accessory movements, the rolls and glides of a joint, address what happens in the shoulder. Uh, in terms of, well, considering all of this was fine, uh, we're looking at just one of these things, which is external rotation strength deficit. So to complete uh, Ming's assessment, what else should we do now? Should sure, assess the neck. Definitely look at the neck. Yeah. And also, yeah, look at this. So yeah. this is cervical spine, and this is the rest of the joint. So you're investigating further why flexion is then stuck. Cause, cause I feel, there's a deficit in flexion. Because I feel like after doing the uh, special test, I think it's more of a cervical problem compared to the shoulder problem. So see how you're deciphering that now? Yeah. Because this is all cleared up. Yeah. You're thinking, hang on a second, it's probably not much in the shoulder. By doing things like this in the shoulder, you're ironing it out completely. But you might find that there's a lot happening in the cervical spine. Until you do it, you don't know. Right? Any uh, questions on that? The question is, I'm really bad with accessory movement. So if I was doing a shoulder, I would just feeling uh, the AP and PA uh, movement and what was called also traction of the joint. All right, I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> so one of the things is there's always going to be tests or areas that you might not have assessed, you're not comfortable with, yeah. you might not have learned it yet. What should you do in that situation? Give it a go. Give it a go. After that? Uh, we'll, we'll find, we'll sum, summarize your finding and then reflect on your performance. Yeah. Ask her for your feedback. Well, lucky Ming's a physio as well. Yeah. You can ask her. Who else can you ask? Ask you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you ask one of your seniors. For sure. If you ask one of your seniors and say, look, um, I've got uh, this athlete, volleyball athlete. Um, I'm sure I, I can't sort of, I can't assess the neck. Can you help out? And we run through the assessment of the neck. Mm. Okay. So this is good. I like the subjective, uh, utilizing information in the subjective, you pulled out a lot of the plan for the objective. And I think there's still a few holes there, but yeah. you know, at least it gives you a plan. And especially for someone like me, for the short term, we're looking, and if we looked at the, you know, the issues in the subjective, we can then say, here's the plan over the short term for you. Sounds all right? Sounds good. Sounds okay. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Any questions?